It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the annual COR pre Pesach lecture, Patov Shinai and Dalit. It is my honor and great privilege tonight to introduce Mr. Jack Feintach. Mr. Feintach is the Vice Chair of COR's Executive Board and also, together with his wife, Harriet, are the sponsors for tonight's event. Jack's community asconas, both in building Thornhill and throughout Toronto's Jewish institutions, is well known and legendary. Jack has been involved with the COR for many, many years and has been a key advisor throughout the years. With his sage advice and constant encouragement, Jack has supported and continues to support the COR throughout all of our endeavors towards the future. Jack will say a few words tonight about our beloved Reb Leibi Newman al Vashalom, Reb Ari Leib and Aaron, to whom Jack was particularly close and to whom tonight's event is dedicated to his memory. Without further ado, Mr. Jack Knight. Thank you, Reverend Hager. The minute is um, the minute in such events is, as they say, poschim the So, firstly, I'd like to thank our hosts, Bayit, for hosting this evening and uh, for all the arrangements that uh, were made for this event. In particular, I'd like to mention Rabbi Karatkin, who is, I understand, out of town uh, today. I'd like to particularly mention Rabbi Karatkin, who, when Rabbi Haber and I approached him about this idea of creating this evening in Zecher Leibi, I can tell you Rabbi Karatkin embraced it, enthusiastically encouraged us to make this event and supported us and um, I do very much appreciate um, his involvement. In addition, while I'm acknowledging uh, others, I want to particularly mention Rabbi Haber who really really germinated this idea on his own. And when he heard about the unfortunate passing of Reb Leibe, he immediately came up with this idea. He is really the architect of creating such a such an event. And um, I'll speak about that uh, a little bit uh, later on. I'm only going to speak for a couple of minutes because we, we have, as you know, two very distinguished speakers. But I do want to say just a couple of words about our father, our friend, Lighty Newman, the Roman Brock. There's a great deal written in the Mishnah, Pirka Yavos, and later on in the Gemara, about establishing or developing a relationship called a chaver, a friend. Mm. We all are familiar with the famous Mishnah in Pirkei Avos, in the first parak, <coughs> which reads as follows. I'm going to skip to the middle of it. It says, Yeshua ben Prak ya Omer, Aselech Rav, establish yourself a rabbi, Ukenelech a chaver, buy yourself or acquire a friend, the heavy done is kol adam the kapsachus, and judge everybody in terms of establishing, giving him the benefit of the doubt. Yeshua ben Prachia, Yeshua was the leader of the Sanhedrin and the guardian of the Torah Dal Peh, the Oral Torah, during the great reign of the Hashemonoim. Involved in a major revolt. 
fled with other Rabbanim to Egypt. And according to the Yalpit Shmoni, a compilation of Midrashic interpretations, Yoshua and Prachi returned to Yerushalayim and served for a time as the Kohen Gadol. As he said, on the surface, is strange language for making friends. How does one buy, or rather acquire, a friend? The rabbis tell us a person acquires a friend by eating and drinking with him, by learning with him, by investing the time and establishing a relationship, by debating with him, and we all know how Leipzig love to debate. By sharing our private thoughts on life and Torah issues that matter. A friend is more than a social companion. A friend is someone who we are comfortable with in sharing secret thoughts and sometimes even embarrassing moments. A friend is not a yes man nor a flatterer but someone who shares the truth, criticizes when necessary, supports and comforts. Leibe always told the MS the pure truth and gave us the sincere view, never reluctant or reticent about expressing it. He was, as they say, a straight shooter, a view that was right or correct, but may not be politically correct or politically popular, but always the truth. Rivera Wine, I read recently, wrote an essay about this idea of telling the truth, titled The Truth Hurts. And it's worth, if you have the time, to, to read it. The idea of being good friends or neighbors is further discussed in the end of the Gemara of Sukkah, which, by the way, happens to be yesterday's daf. The famous idiom of Oyla Rasha Oyla Shreino, Tovla Tzadik Tovla Shreino, just as one that is, that is neighbors with someone that is afflicted with Tzaras, which we interpret as leprosy, but an affliction, may suffer the dismantling of his home. Those that are neighbors with righteous will at the same time benefit conversely from their goodness. As Rashi points out, the Rabbanu Shalom in meting out of reward is greater than his aspect of dealing out punishment. So we see the value of dwelling with good neighbors, with good people, and good friends. <coughs> Friendship is a two-way street. There must be an expenditure of time and material and emotion to acquire real friends. Friends that are cheaply bought and that are not invested seriously by each other, by each other are really not friends at all. Leiby, together with Mindy, made many friends shortly after they arrived to the Bayat community. They were engaging, interesting, and obviously to us all, loved each other. Leiby's friends called, crossed all religious experiences and political boundaries. He had friends that were senior to him, as well as a following of young Balabatim, like Ezra and Avi, and a whole group of younger people, all the way to the youngest of children, like my grandchildren, the Klein kids and the Cohen kids and others. Leiby always had a pat on the head and a candy for every kid that came by. Leiby represented the ideal that we strive for in this Kehillah HaKadosha, an ideal rooted in the very spiritual establishment of this shul, an idea established when we started as a young, newly created shul some 33 years ago, an ideal that we may all look a bit different, may have different levels of learning, different levels of experience and observance, but we get along. We care for one another and appreciate 
everyone's contribution to the whole, to the club. Leiby felt comfortable living in the entire world, in both Torah and Umada. Leiby, together with Mindy, lived this ideal, and it defined them as a couple. Leiby was a musmak of Yeshivas Chai in Berlin. He wore a long Bekashad Shabbos, a gartel, and a Hasidish Torah on his talis. But his shoes were Hugo Boss or Gucci. His neckties, always the finest Italian souls. Leiby, Mindy, and our family spent many hours during Shabbos meals, Yom Tovim, and Pesach Sidurim, reminiscing about the old days in New York. My family had a strong connection to the late Ramosha Vick. Rabbi Vick established his, his Gehilla firstly in the Bronx, and later relocated in the late 60s to Borough Park. Rabbi Vick was a descendant of the great Rappaport Vick dynasty, a significant, a significant non hasidic dynasty rooted back to the 17th century in the Ukraine. Rabbi Dick was known as one of the great postmen in the 20th century. Leiby knew Rabbi Dick, and we often reminisced and both enjoyed talking about those days when things were a little more simple and maybe just even a little bit more normal. During Leiby's week of Shiva, one evening I attended an executive meeting of our board of directors. It was pointed out by Rabbi Haber and others that Leiby would leave a big hole to fill. He represented COR in its best way. He served as a senior mashkiach at several five-star hotels. You see, Leiby was a five-star mashkiach. Many times with Mindy's involvement as well. They were often seen as a team at these impressive events. Thoroughly, thoroughly knowledgeable with all the intricacies of halacha, Leiby carried out his work with tremendous scholarship, with grace, personality, and thought. He made many friends with his non-Jewish clients and colleagues at these venues, and more importantly, he earned the respect and admiration of many. I know I speak on behalf of Harry and myself, and a large circle of his chaveri that feels so rich for experiencing our relationship with this special Jew. May tonight's event and the Limu HaTorah serve as an aliyah to his neshama, <coughs> and he, Rabbi Aryuleh ben Aharon, our beloved Leiby, continue to be a gitaveta for Mindy, the family, and all of us who were so fortunate to know him as a friend and as our father.